Dr. Tom Termato is with us. We're going to take a look at the Gulf. Now, let me ask you an honest question, folks. When's the last major news story you saw in any alleged American media outlet that had to do with the tragedy, the catastrophe of the Gulf of Mexico, which is literally dead? And uh, it's going to stay that way for a, a tragically long time. Dr. Tom Termato has been right on top of this story from the beginning, working seven and a half days a week. He's back with us tonight for this hour to bring us up to speed and give us an idea of how it looks from his position, uh, which is where, Tom? Where are you right now? I'm in Tallahassee, Florida. How are things? Let's just give our folks out there an overview. The government, of course, has pretty much put this thing to sleep. They've washed their hands of it. And it's all over, and the seafood has been adjudged to be perfectly fine, etc. Meanwhile, we have hundreds of thousands or millions of people who are suffering to one degree or another from a variety of health issues. Tell us more. Well, everything you said is correct, Jeff. And, you know, the problem that we have here is that all of the independent study, all the research, all of the uh, testing, laboratory testing that's been done, um, outside of the uh, the framework of the, of the U.S. government, BP Corporation, everything has turned up something uh, on the on the seafood. Every every independent test has been conducted. So mm-hmm. we have a a, a group mm-hmm. of uh, of fifteen panelists, scientists, who have signed on to a uh, a research group that is going to take this to another level. Um, much as the uh, like the architects did for nine eleven, where they got together and they said, hey. You know, mm-hmm. this doesn't add up 9-11. Let's, let's look at this scientifically and bring our findings to the government. So the we, we need dozens of scientists to step forward and do this. That's exactly right. I think, I think you know, we're at a point with the, with the Gulf whereby if the, if the scientists and the PhDs and researchers um, really stepped up to the plate, they could bring to bear enough pressure on the government and BP to start making statements that are accurate and truthful about think, the, the quality of the, the seafood and the and the uh, the safety of the water. Yeah, and uh, you know what's going on in the beaches. So I, I I just wish Tom that we wouldn't as a people be so damn dumb as to believe anything the government or BP tells us about anything, especially the edibility and the nutritional aspects of of contaminated seafood from the Gulf, and it's all contaminated. This is the biggest. I mean, this is the biggest rub for the for the people down here because you know if you live on the Gulf, uh, you know most of these folks are avid avid seafood eaters. And oh yeah, to send them the message that uh, the seafood is safe is really what we're, what we're doing with that message. Um, you know, Barbara Weissman, she's the international president of the Earth Organization out in California. Mm-hmm. She's put together an extraordinary video. It draws you down to a uh, conclusion that there has always been a very safe and non-toxic, easily applied uh, bioremediation agent that could have been used throughout the entire course of the spill. It's actually an NCF-approved product. National Contingency Plan has given it its uh, thumbs up, and it's been used on countless spills. And the president, Steve Pedigo, who I've talked to a number of times, is uh, just kind of knocking his head against the wall of the EPA, trying to figure out why they won't let them apply this on the spill. So the video, you know, is a is sort of one piece of a campaign that we're starting. Uh, and you probably saw that letter that, that you posted uh, from BK Lim to the two yep. uh, the two congressmen who are you know heading up various committees that would be in a good position to, to uh, initiate a congressional hearing around this. So we're hoping that you know coming at it from a number of angles, the, the government will be compelled to step up to the plate. They, they've got to at some point. They, they can't ignore it. Uh, much longer, really. I'd rather have them be compelled to step up to the edge of the cliff and then take one more step. We need to start over again. I don't trust these people. I expect nothing will come from them of any benefit to the American public at large, and most especially our brothers and sisters, friends and relatives and neighbors in the Gulf, all of us. We're all Americans, and we've got to uh, get away from this label thing and and stop thinking compartmentally. Uh, No, I don't trust them. I, I I wish I could say, great, Tom, let's put pressure on them, and they're going to crack, and they're going to come through. They're going to turn 180 degrees and start telling us the truth. I don't think so. I wish I did. 
I think it's up to us to make the effort and to literally use every means possible to try to reach every person possible in the Gulf outside of their little paradigms and milieus of local television news, national television news, and even if they're on the Internet looking at the, the usual suspects. We've got to break through this and tell these people that they have been not only lied to, but in many cases consigned to an early grave. And that's, that's the damn dark truth of it. I think that um, what, we're, what we're trying to do with this letter, um, and the letter that B.K. Lim wrote, of course, is just one you know, initiative to, uh, to have him commence a, full, a full-blown congressional hearing. But the other letter that is being produced um, is one that uh, is being sent directly to Obama. It's a very specific breakdown of, of questions and concerns um, that when the letter is released, if they don't answer the questions, then they're guilty. And if they do answer the questions, uh-huh. then they're guilty. So yeah. we have a letter here that, you know, uh, is going to be a centerpiece of this campaign. And really, we're talking about, we've identified seven or eight different individuals in government. You know, what they've got going for them, Jeff, is that uh, is the law that says that while they're in office, they enjoy immunity. And so uh, some of these folks are out of office. That Allen is no longer in his position. Uh, a couple of other people are no longer there, and therefore are vulnerable. They're personally liable, and they can be held, uh, you know, criminally liable for for crimes if the, it can be proven they've committed them while serving in their respective well, positions. Well, <laughs> Thad has, uh, shall we say, lots of opportunity uh, <laughs> well, to know, do right? to do exactly that. Jeez. The state of BK's limb, BK Lim's life right now looks like this. He and his wife um, uh, do not stay in, in either of their two homes that they own in the Asian Rim. Right. Because they cannot. Right. So they're, they've been moving for, uh, either by day or by week or by month from one location to another, from one country to another, uh, under threat of, uh, of being assassinated. And I... You know, I've alluded to this in a few emails that I've sent you over the months that, you know, there are things that were going on that we could not even have BK on an interview with you because they're able to track him. We tried, yeah. We, so, so, you yeah. know, we, we've had many allusions to this predicament, but this is the first time that we've really okay. uh, broken out into the open with the real story. And it, it simply is that BK has no choice but to live his life um, uh, moving from one hotel to the next, one safe house to the next. 